In this video, we'll go over two different ways to incorporate an SVG within CSS. So let's go, let's go. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're looking to get into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. This video is part two of a multi-part series on SVGs. I'll include links to the other videos and the playlist containing all the videos in the description below. Before we jump in, I've also put timestamps in the description below. Feel free to jump around to find the content that's relevant to what you're looking for. One more thing, one more thing. For these code examples, I'm gonna be using CodePen. If you've never used CodePen before, it's a website for code samples and experimentation. For what we're doing today, you can set up a free account. Whew. Let's go. Let's take a look at adding an SVG as a background image in CSS. This one is pretty easy and straightforward and it's handled just like any other background image. Let's add an empty div to our HTML with a class of SVG BG. I have a pro code pin account so I can upload assets. If I click on the assets button here at the bottom, I can grab the code pin icon SVG that I uploaded in the last video. I'm gonna click on this copy as button and select copy URL. Now within our CSS, we can target it. So I'm gonna say SVG BG and background, and I'm going to paste our SVG path into that URL. And we want this to be left, top, and no repeat. Then for the width, let's give this a width of 100 pixels and a height of 100 pixels and a display of block. Now if we save this, you'll see this is actually just part of the icon here. So we need to add a background size property to make sure that it fits within our container. Cool. Easy, right? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, the only downside to this method is that you can't change the background color. Let's look at another option. And if you're interested, I've created an SVG cheat sheet that you can download for free. Link in the description below. There are seven different ways that you can get an SVG on the page, and this cheat sheet references all seven, along with the pros and cons for each method. So check it out. Okay, so within CSS, there's a property called mask. Basically, what we're going to do is set the background color for our div, and then you can use our SVG as a mask. You can think of it kind of like a cookie cutter. The only parts of the background color that the user will see is the SVG shape. So within CodePen, let's create another div with the class of SVG mask. Now within our CSS, I'm going to target that class, SVG mask, and I'm going to set our background to pink. And I'm going to limit the size to 100 pixels. Now let's use our mask image property. And this property works similar to the background image. So I'm gonna say mask image URL. And actually there's also a mask size and a mask repeat that you can use. Why is this not working? When you're experimenting with code pen, you need to make sure that you have auto prefixing enabled. To do that, click on the gear icon and make sure that auto prefixer is selected and then click save and close. Voila, it works. Auto prefixer is a post CSS plugin that adds vendor prefixes to your code. Wondering what a vendor prefix is? When a browser adds new features, these are usually experimental features or non-standard CSS properties, it will use a vendor prefix. And the idea is that this allows developers to experiment without breaking their code. Chrome, Safari, newer versions of Opera, and most iOS browsers use WebKit. Firefox uses Moe's, and older versions of Opera use O. Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge use MS. I'm gonna turn off auto prefixer just for a second so that you can see what this looks like with vendor prefixes. Okay, so you should see a square of pink again. And then let's take our mask image here and we wanna duplicate this for Opera, for Firefox, for Microsoft, and for Safari. Okay, you'll see that it's cutting off our mask size again. So we wanna duplicate this for Opera, for Firefox, for Microsoft, for Safari. Now it should be rendering correctly. 
As I'm sure you can tell, it adds quite a bit of code and feels redundant. That's why Auto Prefixer is such a great tool. It injects all those vendor prefixes for us. It's also important to mention that not every property needs a vendor prefix, just the newest properties. Auto Prefixer is smart enough to know which properties need the additional definitions and which ones don't. And while we're on it, if you're nervous about browser support, you can always go to caniuse.com and type in the name of the property you want to use. It will show you a grid of all the browsers with information about their support. If we type in mask, you'll see that it's yellow, meaning we have partial support. But if you scroll down a little bit, the fine print will explain exactly what pieces of the mask property are supported. If we type in mask image, you'll see that it's green across the board. In this case, it might be safer to use mask image instead of the shorthand mask. As I mentioned before, this video is part of a multi-part series on SVG, so be sure to check out the description below for the playlist. If you like this video and want to see more videos on web design and development, be sure to hit the subscribe button below, hit the bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding. Hey.